Hello everybody, my name is Exony, and today I'm here to convince you soldier mains out there to take off your gunboat, throw your shotguns to the side, and pick up one of those soldier backpack secondaries. Yes, that's right, those things, they still exist. If the shotgun and the gunboats represent two different types of soldier, those who play more defensively in order to protect themselves or a medic on one side of the spectrum, and those who use gunboats to be super aggressive and rocket jump everywhere on the other side. In between these two sides, we have a middle ground, which the banners fill, that allow the soldier to become a more team oriented class and they can even let the soldier change the tide of the battle. Obviously we have the buff banner, the battalion's backup, and the conqueror, which all fit in our middle ground here, but each does lean a little more towards one side than the other. For example, an aggressive soldier would be more likely to find use out of the conqueror's speed boost and passive healing, while a more passive soldier would find the beauty in the battalion's backup's intricacies. I'm in no way saying that the items you equipped are definitive proof of how you play. A soldier with the gunboats, for example, can play extremely reserved sometimes, and a soldier with a shotgun could be super aggressive in the battle. But in general, these weapons do signify a certain certain playstyle, but both of these playstyles are very individualistic. Now, while I said a soldier who uses the shotgun may be using it to protect a medic or other teammates around him, it does encourage the soldier to protect himself more than anything by giving him additional firepower at close range. To deal with, say, a pesky scout who's jumping around, this means the way a soldier is generally played, gunboats or shotgun, is very self-centered. You care about yourself and not so much about your team around you, leading to most soldiers adopting a roamer role in just any sort of play. And there's nothing wrong with this. The soldier does extremely well as an individual character doing things on his own. But when he uses the banners, he becomes a team-centric character. His abilities expand from just being able to help himself in a one-on-one -on -one fight and being able to pick off targets for his team to being able to encourage his team to push and making the pushes accomplishable. Now that I've talked up the banner so much, what makes these weapons so useful? Let's start with the first one that was released, the buff banner. The buff banner doesn't have any notable passive abilities for the soldier, so you're completely giving up your secondary slot for this one. Once you deal 600 damage with either your primary weapon or your melee weapon, all teammates within a radius of you are granted mini crits for 8 seconds. This is incredibly useful for defensive teams actually, despite what it would seem. Because if you're using it on an offensive push, you're going to have to be pushing into sentries more than likely, and to nobody's surprise, mini crits aren't that effective against sentries. So, if you use this on a defensive side, you're less likely to run into a fully built level 3 sentry nest, and you're more likely to push into your enemy team's soft squishy bodies. And let me tell you, with the buff banner, if you have teammates around you, you can really start to rip into the enemy team. A demo man or heavy buffed with this banner can really do a lot of damage. And that's really what you want to be doing with a buff banner, a lot of damage. And the best way to achieve this is by using it when you have a lot of teammates around you. Because while the soldier may be able to do 120 to 150 damage with one rocket, mini crit boosted, a heavier demo man also boosted by this, or a whole team around you, can do a lot of damage to the enemies a lot better than just the soldier can on his own. It easily allows you to divide an enemy team while they're pushing, scatter them and take them out, because nobody wants to be near the enemy team when they're all buffed like this. It's an incredibly good deterrence, and it's incredibly good just for getting rid of enemies. And in those kinds of situations, the buff banner really shines. The kinds of situations where you need to be able to output a lot of damage to deal with a lot of enemies coming at you, and to amplify your team's damage to deal with those same groups of enemies. Obviously it works best when there's teammates around you, but it can be used alone if you want to use it like that. And then we have the most widely used banner in the game, the Conqueror, which has an amazing passive effect of healing the soldier at a maximum rate of 4 health per second once they've been out of combat for so long. And its active effect grants you 35% of all damage dealt back as health and a speed boost to all teammates within its aura. This effect is so applicable to so many situations that it's incredibly versatile as a banner and just the best go-to pick when it comes to which banner should I use. It's also the easiest banner to charge, only requiring 480 damage instead of the 600 damage required by the battalion's backup or the buff banner to charge. You're going to have it more often, its effect is more versatile than the other two, and it's much easier for your team to get behind it. Everyone kind of realizes, hey, I'm going faster. Hey, I'm getting a little bit of health back with every bit of damage I deal. This is pretty cool. Which makes it the go-to banner in a lot of situations. Because in casual, a lot of players aren't very organized. There's a lot of people just going around and doing their own thing. There's a lot of players who don't truly understand what's going on. But everyone can understand, hey, I'm going faster. Maybe I should use this to get in there. It's much easier for a team to engage off of than, say, the battalion's backup's defense boost, which may be more satisfying to get a good push off of, but it's much harder to get value out of than the Conqueror. And there's nothing wrong with that. The Conqueror's versatile effect makes it incredibly powerful for a lot of situations. 
and it's also a very good solo banner. Because of its passive healing it gives the soldier, it sort of mitigates the amount of damage you'd be taking from a lot of rocket jumps over time as it starts healing you. You just have to play more passively once you're behind enemy lines to get that healing up. Generally you'll see a lot of soldiers pair this with the black box just so they can live forever and have healing forever, but like all of the banners, it's much more effective when used for your team rather than just yourself. And then finally, we have the best banner, my favorite banner, the Battalion's Backup. A lot of people do undervalue the Battalion's Backup's buff, and a lot of people don't truly understand what it is, which makes it hard to get a push off of it if you're just playing in an unorganized casual game or something like that. But its abilities really shine once you have a team who has some organization behind them, or maybe you're playing with some friends. The Battalion's Backup provides a 35% resistance to all damage to all people within its radius, a 50% resistance to sentry damage, and it nullifies all critical and mini crit effects. This makes this banner incredibly good at pushing choke point. Because of its resistance to just all damage, so general spam, its resistance to sentry fire damage, which, let's be honest, a good sentry gun in a pub can be devastating, and also, its resistance to critical hits. This means, say the enemy team has an annoying sniper who's just locking down a sightline. Your team can't push there at all. But with the battalion's backup buff, he can't headshot. It nullifies critical hits for that sniper. So if you push during those eight seconds, that sniper won't be able to do anything. Maybe he'll get 150 damage body shot off, but that's gonna be nowhere near as effective as him just railing off headshots. Now, the battalion's backup is definitely extremely hard to get value out of. It requires a lot of communication to use, but it's my favorite banner because of that. Because of how hard it is to utilize, but the value it holds within itself, it makes it incredibly interesting to see it being used properly. So I understand if a lot of people don't see value in the battalion's backup as a banner when you could be using something like the Conqueror or the buff banner. It's an incredibly interesting tool at the soldier's disposal, and in the situations where it can be used, it's incredibly cool to see it used, just because of how interesting its buff is when compared to other items of this same type. It's like a mini vaccinator push where everyone on your team has eight seconds to go. You can almost use it like an off uber push to just get through a choke point with your team without having to waste an uber charge. And I'm going to stop talking about the battalion's backup right there because I don't think anybody's really here to listen to me talk about how great I think one of the soldier's worst backup items is in the right situations or how good it can be when applied properly. I wanted to conclude this by asking you, what do you think of the soldier's banners? Do you think that these open up a interesting style of play that is equal to the soldier's normal style of play while changing him to be a more team-oriented class, or are the banners worthless? Should the soldier just be a rocket-jumping damage dealer whose job is just to get behind, cause mayhem, get picks, and not help his team in the way that the banners allow him to. I'm interested in hearing what people have to say about each of these banners actually, because like I've said, the battalion's backup is definitely my favorite. A lot of people probably don't share this opinion with me. I just wanna hear what you guys have to say. And with that, I hope you have a great day. Go out, try maybe using a banner, and yeah, peace out.